This is going to be a study on the subject of thinking about your future. Do you ever think about how there's more to life than just this life that you're in? Do you ever think about how every minute counts? Do you ever think about how you shouldn't kill the time but redeem the time? Do you think about your future? Because in the future, everyone goes to two places. If you die today and you're saved in the future, you're going to go to heaven. 2 Corinthians 5.8 says, We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. That's your future if you're saved. You're going to be absent from the body one day. Now, if you're not saved, Luke 16, 23 says, And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. So, if you're saved, your future is heaven. If you're not saved, your future is hell. Do you think about your future? Do you think about heaven? Do you think about hell? Do you think about how every minute counts? Do you think about how there's more to life than just this life that you're living right now? It's not going to always be like it is right now. In 1 Thessalonians 4.16, it tells you your future if you're saved. 1 Thessalonians 4.16 says, For the Lord himself should ascend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, that we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So, if you're saved, that's your future, is the rapture. Going up in the rapture with the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're lost, your future is staying here and going through the tribulation after the church is raptured. Have you thought about your future? Are you going to go in the rapture or are you going to stay here? You don't want to stay here. People don't realize that they're a breath away from going to hell. They're one heartbeat away from opening their eyes in hellfire. There are many worldly wise men in hell, but men are only concerned with the temporal. They don't realize there's more to life than just this life. If your house is going to burn down, would you want to know? In the future, if your house is going to burn down, would you want to know? Uh, at work, a guy, uh, when we get there, says, Welcome to hell. And I mean, I work in a freezer, so he obviously doesn't know what hell's like. He's only concerned with the temporal, not the eternal. I doubt that he thinks much about heaven or hell. But in 2 Corinthians 4, 18, it says, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Think about your future. Are you thinking about the temporal things? Or are you take, thinking about where you're going to spend eternity and what eternity will be like? So think about your future. Is it heaven or hell? And next, think about your future. Is it rewards or no rewards? Because a Christian, if you're a Christian, you're going to get rewards for serving. But a Christian can suffer loss. Uh, men on this earth, they have their mind on the temporal. They're not thinking about rewards in heaven. They're thinking about a raise at work. But Revelation 4, 10 and 11 says, The four and twenty elders fell down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. So right there you see, somebody's getting some crowns in heaven. So have you thought about your future? Is it going to be a future of rewards or no rewards? 
Notice that in Revelation 4.10 and 11. Somebody's got some crowns. In Romans 14.10, it says, But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou sit at not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Every single one of us, if you're saved, you're going to stand at the judgment seat of Christ. In 1 Corinthians 3.12-15, it says, Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. See, it's just not about all the things you do. It's about what was the motive. What was the motive behind the good things that you do? What's the motive behind the things you do for the Lord? What sort is it? If any man, if any man's work abide, which he, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. So you can suffer loss for not living right on this earth, for not living like the Lord wants you to, but you can earn rewards that are going to last forever. Have you thought about your future? 2 Corinthians 5.10 says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. So what you do with your time does matter. It does matter. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. So trade in the video games and the Netflix and all these all these hobbies that's taking up all your time and do something that's going to be eternal. Matthew 6, 19 and 20 says, Lay down up for yourself treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Colossians 3, 2, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Have you thought about your future? Is it going to be rewards or no rewards? Is it going to be heaven or is it going to be hell? Now next, is it going to be raining or not raining? Your reigning in the millennial kingdom is conditioned on how you live for the Lord here. Now you're going to go into the kingdom. You're going to go in the millennial kingdom if you're saved. But you may not be reigning. But men aren't worried about this. They're, they're worried about having their house paid off. They're worried about a good retirement. But are they going to be reigning in the millennial kingdom? In 2 Timothy 2.12 it says, If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. So if you do some suffering for the Lord down here, then you're going to reign with the Lord in those 1,000 years. Luke 19, 17 says, And he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little, in a very little, have thou authority over ten cities. If you just are faithful a little bit, you're going to have authority. Revelation 20 and verse 6, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So do you want to be king with King Jesus? Do you want to reign with him? Instead of worrying about getting a raise, worried so much about your retirement, worried so much about what you're going to do, with the money that you've made here, why not set up treasures in heaven? Why not try to earn some rewards where you can reign with the Lord? And this will go on out into eternity, past the 1,000 years. I mean, think about your future, thinking about the eternal things. People just go through life, and they it's like they see this life as all there is, and to take it further, they see the day that they're in right now 
is all there is. So is it going to be raining or not raining? The next, is it going to be a marriage supper or the supper of the great God? In the book of Revelation, it talks about when the Lord comes back and all those dead bodies that he's going to trample over are going to be meat for the fowls of the air in the book of Revelation. And it calls that the supper of the great God. But there's also another supper in Revelation 19, 9, it says, And he saith unto me, Right blessed are they which are called into the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. So is it going to be the marriage supper of the Lamb or the supper of the great God for you? At the marriage supper of the Lamb, this is a supper that takes place while tribulation is going on on this earth, most likely. After the great, after the judgment seat of Christ, you got the judgment seat of Christ, and you got the marriage supper of the Lamb for the believers, and then the Lord's coming back with us at the second coming, and at that time, the dead bodies that are accumulated by the Lord are going to be meat for the fowls of the air. Which supper are you going to be a part of? To be a part of that supper of the great God, you're going to have to deny the Lord Jesus Christ, miss the rapture, go through the tribulation, and then survive all the way until the Lord comes back at the second coming. And then he's going to trample people under that white horse. The blood's going to be up to the horse's bridles, and the bodies are going to be meat for the fowls. For the birds. That's where you get the saying, it's for the birds. So which supper are you going to be a part of? The marriage supper of the Lamb? Or the supper of the great God? The marriage supper of the Lamb is a real perfect meal. Meals on this earth are not perfect. They always have imperfections, no matter how good you think they are. Uh, heaven will have perfect food. You won't have to worry about the calories. You won't have to worry about getting food poisoning. You won't have to worry about getting heartburn. Uh, you won't have to worry about any of the stuff you worry about when eating food on this earth. It's It will be a real perfect meal at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Don't you want to be a part of that? Have you thought about that in your future? A lot of people look forward to going out to eat on the weekend. A lot of people look forward to dinner time with their family, but are you looking forward to the marriage supper? Have you thought about these things? Have you thought about how this life that you're in right now with a wife and kids and a house and a job, have you thought about how this life is and all there is? There's more to life than just getting established here on this earth. Have you thought about the winning side versus the losing side. You see, when the Lord comes back at the second coming, He's going to have His army with Him. That's going to be you if you're saved. You're going to be on the winning side. The Bible says, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of His saints. And in the book of Revelation chapter 19, it says, His armies followed Him upon white horses. Are you going to be on that side? That's the winning side. Or are you going to be on the losing side? The side that make war against him and his army, as it says in Revelation 19. That's the losing side. That's all the kings of the earth, all the armies of the earth, gathered together against the Lord Jesus Christ. Just like people have always done, they... Even though they may be enemies, they still gather together to go against the Lord Jesus Christ. In Zephaniah 3, 8, it says, Therefore, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey, for my determination is to gather the nations, that I may assemble the kingdoms, to pour, out, to pour upon them mine indignation. Even all my fierce anger for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. That's the reason for the Lord gathering the nations so he can 
put his anger out on them faster. He wants them to get together. That way you can just kill them all right there together. And in Revelation 16, 12, it says, And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be, be prepared. So the Lord dries up the water so they can gather together faster. And that's what people want to do. They want to get together. They're ecumenical. And although they get together against God, this is still the Lord's will because that way he can just destroy them faster. Have you thought about that? Which side are you on? Are you on the winning side or are you on the losing side? The, win the losing side may have a lot of things to attract you, to get you to join their side. But you've already been promised in the Bible that the Lord's side is the winning side. Have you thought about that? Have you thought about your future? You have a book in your house that tells you the future. Everything I've told you is your future. People go to psychics. People get their palms read. People do all these types of things. They use Ouija boards trying to get their future read. Why not just open the Bible? I've told you your future. Are you going to be on the winning side or are you going to be on the losing side? Are you going to be in the lake of fire or in New Jerusalem? You see, one of these days, the people that are in hell right now are going to be called up to the great white throne judgment and they're going to be cast into the lake of fire. See, you can call the lake of fire hell because hell's going into the lake of fire. But there is a difference between the hell that people are in now. I mean, they're burning right now. But the lake of fire is much worse. It's kind of like that saying, out of the frying pan and into the fire. People who have been in hell are going to be tossed into the lake of fire. At the great white throne judgment. And you're going to see people... You affected. And you maybe you affected them in a good way. Maybe you affected them in a bad way. But have you thought about that? Have you thought about your future? How are you acting around other people? How do you act around lost people? In Revelation 20, 11 through 15, this is the future of every person. Every person will be at this event. You'll be being judged or you'll be doing judging. But in Revelation 20, 11, it says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Is that your future? Are you going to get up there and see the wicked things you've done played out before your eyes to determine how hot hell's going to be for you, how hot Lake of the lake of fire is going to be for you for all eternity? Or are you going to be in New Jerusalem with the saints, with the body of Christ? Revelation 21, 2 through 5 says, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for, all, for these words are true and faithful. So is that your future? Is your future New Jerusalem? It says, No more death. Neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. So are you worried about your future here? Are you worried about bodily exercise and eating right and 
trying to live as long as you can and worried about feeling good and looking good when you're older? Or are you thinking about your eternal future where you can have no more death, sorrow, crying, or pain? You're not going to have to worry about your weight. You're not going to have to worry about your bones aching if you go to this place. But you have to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Or you're going to be tossed into the lake of fire. Pretty much, if you get saved, this is this sets you up for the future. And you know how to get saved because the Bible says, Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He shed his blood, he was buried, and he rose again the third day. To be saved, you simply put your trust in him and what he did for you. And you trust in that to pay for your sins, and you're saved. It's more than just believing he existed. You take it a step further and you believe that what he did can save you. You put your trust in him. A lot of people know the facts. They know there was a man named Jesus Christ, but they don't realize he was a God. He's God man. He's God manifested in the flesh. And they don't realize that they, they have to put their trust in him. But the Bible says in Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Any person. If you're listening to this, and you're breathing, then there's hope. You, you're not out of time if you're still breathing. So come to Jesus Christ as the guilty sinner that you are and think about your future. Is it going to be heaven or is it going to be hell? Is it going to be the lake of fire or New Jerusalem? Is it going to be the winning side or the losing side? Think about your future. Realize there's more to life than just this everyday life you're living right now. There is an eternity that awaits you.